The men's 50 is next on our list with the Cheshire Road Club staging the event on Cheshire and Shropshire roads based on Whitchurch, Prees, Turnhill and Market Drayton. Although a course with only a few hundred yards of dual carriageway, much of it was familiar territory to 12 and 24 hour riders and with only a slight wind, the locals predicted some fast times. That's Steve Hulme, better known for his hill climbing silver medal in Cleveland in 1996 than for his efforts over 50 miles. Nevertheless, he was first to finish with a sparkling 155.28 that was to hold top spot for a short while. One. Veteran Tim Horton was the first seeded rider, but it wasn't to be the Halifax man's day. For the record, though, he was timed at exactly one hour at 25 miles and exactly two hours at the finish. The 1994 12-hour champion Nick Gardiner was next off as the sun began to make its presence felt. Note also Team Clean's ex-pro Dave Aikham making his final preparations on the left there. The mid-oxen rider chased Hume all the way round and all but caught Horton at the finish to record a time of 1.55.19. He'd taken the lead by just nine seconds. Duckinfield's Steve Butterworth knows these roads well, but a time of 2.10 was not quite as good as he'd hoped for. At number 20 came Nick Giles of CC Lancashire. A former BBAR top 12er, he was out to make amends this year after crashing out of the 1997 National 12 and ending up in hospital. In the event, he rode steadily all the way round to clock 154.33 and go into the lead. Behind him, Bradford Olympics' Colin Hawksby was trying to straighten out some of Cheshire's twisting roads, but he never quite produced the form he shows in Yorkshire, and an eventual time of 2.116 was a bit of a disappointment. Spectators come in all shapes and sizes at bike races, and the next rider they saw was Gary Empson, now with the Guru Squad. But he too found the meandering rows of Cheshire and Shropshire a little hard to handle, and had to settle for a 158-3. This is another Guru man, Dale Aitkenhead, but he was destined to be one of no less than 12 riders who failed to finish, amongst whom was his teammate Brian Walker. And with their speedy veteran Joe Woffen on starter, it clearly wasn't going to be Guru's day. There were much better fortunes for the Cambridge University fast man Stuart Lemansky. Although 30 seconds down on Giles at half distance, he fairly stormed round the second half to overhaul Giles and provide the event with another new leader with his time of 1.54.22. But his lead lasted less than two minutes as Team Clean began their bid for honours with Tim Stevens. He was clear of both Lemansky and Giles at halfway and roared around the second half to post a new fastest time of 1.53 exactly. Yet that was nothing compared to the surprise awaiting everyone at the finish. Ambrosia's Ian Jilks, more renowned as a top-class roadman with major wins in the Girvan three-day and the Tour of the Kingdom, was taking a liking to time trialling. After a personal best of 51.40 for 11th place in the 25 Championship, he surprised even himself here by producing an exceptional time of 1.47.37. It was a course and Cheshire Road Club's event record, and it would take some beating. Behind him, the team clean challenge continued, with Dave Aikham clearly going well, although losing ground on the amazing Jilks. He was actually 19 seconds up on teammate Stevens at halfway, but couldn't match him over the second 25 miles. Nevertheless, his eventual 153.48 meant that with Messrs Preble and Yates still to come, things were looking good in the team title department. Rowan Horner was the next seeded rider to come under the scrutiny of our cameraman, but he was a little off the pace already set, and the cannon's man had to settle for a time of 1.56.15 that would eventually see him down in 23rd place. This is West Drayton's Simon Howes at Turnhill Roundabout after 15 and three quarter miles, but he was only on a par with Horner, three minutes ahead of him, on the road. 
The former junior BBAR eventually finished just two seconds slower than Horner in 156.17, 24th fastest at the end of the day. Behind him was the guru himself, Harry Walker. The Northeasterner is still hoping for an individual title one day, but this day wasn't to be it. His time, a good one of 153.34, slotted him in just behind Stevens, but it was an incredible six minutes slower than Jilks. This is Leo's Neil Rothwell negotiating the Market Drayton turn after 18.7 miles. He was going reasonably well at this stage, just inside the hour at halfway, but he was being rapidly overhauled by his teammate Andrew Horner here. In fact, as they approached half distance, Horner had Rothwell in his sights up the road, as you'll see in just a moment or two. Here's Rothwell. He doesn't know that Horner's catching him at this point, but catch him he did as Horner went on to clock 155.11. And Rothwell here, not long afterwards, joined the list of DNFs. It actually looks a bit like a two-up here as they both go across Turnhill Island after 29 and a half miles, but the batter was resolved very shortly afterwards. But now back to Team Clean and Richard Preble. Already a winner of this title three times with one win at 10 miles and two at 25 also to his credit, he and his teammates were out to make the most of the absence of Team Bright. Preble's style looked effortless and at halfway he was just 20 seconds down on Jilks. Pushing huge gears, he pulled it back remorselessly in the second half to finish with precisely the same time, 1.47.37. The lead was tied. Ian Cook, riding for J.E. James, came next, winner of several Northern events already in 1998. He was faster than everyone except Jilks and Preble halfway and went on to clock an excellent 152.50, pushing a large fixed gear. He was third fastest so far, yet he was over five minutes behind the dynamic duo. Guru had John Rickards next, and here we see him on the southern loop of the course based on Turnhill Roundabout. At the finish, he'd done a good ride, 154.14, just 40 seconds slower than teammate Harry Walker, and good enough for an eventual 10th place. But it still left Guru some distance behind Team Clean. Former Welsh champion Alan Owen had started well and was only 29 seconds down on Rickards at half distance, but by the end he'd been caught and dropped and the CC Abergavenny man had to settle for a time of 1.56.8. Colville's Jeff Platts was always likely to be a challenger for a place on the podium, particularly as he always seems to be equally at home on dual carriageways and the more sporting courses. At halfway, he was still within a minute of Preble, although 137 slower than Jilks. 25 miles later, and he'd roughly double his deficit on the two joint leaders, clocking 151.5 and slotting into third place on the results board. Next came Bill Moore, another versatile man, but the Leo rider was a minute or two off the pace at halfway and finished with a time of 155.18, seven seconds slower than his teammate Horner. This is Michael Hope, another J.E. James rider and a comparative newcomer to national championships. He wasn't as fast as teammate Ian Cook though, and an eventual time of 154.50 saw him finish in an eventual 14th place. Leo Road Club's last man on the card was the former BBAR Gary Dighton, the 1990 100 champion. He was clearly going well and was fourth fastest at halfway so far. By the end of it all, he'd done a 152.22, still fourth and doing just enough to edge Leo ahead of Guru in the team standings. But last man off was Team Clean Sean Yates, defending the title he won in 1997. Time checks here at Prees Heath Roundabout with about 13 and a half miles remaining showed that he was just down on both Jilks and Preble. Halifax's Rob Townsend, meanwhile, no slouch himself, had just found himself caught by five minutes by the ex-pro, but kept plugging away nevertheless, going on to finish in 157.47.
Ahead of him, Yates was desperately trying to hang on to his title, and there were plenty of roadside checks in the closing miles telling him he was between 30 seconds and a minute behind the two men who were still joint leaders. Remember, this is the man who once won a major time trial stage of the Tour de France. Pendle Forest's Graham Waddington, meanwhile, on a comeback after a year or two away from the sport, was easing himself back into things with a steady performance amounting to a time of 2 one But back to Yates once more. He, here we see him with about a mile to go, but it's all too late now. At the finish, he's managed a great time of 1.48.36, but it's only good enough for the bronze medal, and so for the first time ever, the 50 title is shared.